Hi everybody, welcome to Missy's Imaginings. I hope you're doing well. We were finally freed from the house. <laughs> so if you saw the last video, you know that we've been trapped by the ice in our home. And uh, our neighbors all got together and shoveled. They went out with picks and crowbars and shovels and hacked away at the, it was like a, an inch thick of ice all over the, the hillside and the street. So they were able to clear a path. Um, unfortunately, when they, they shoveled all this ice, they made the pile right behind my car. So my car still can't go anywhere. It's still trapped by this big pile of ice. But my daughter's car was able to get out. And so uh, we were able to actually make it to work one day this week. So that was nice. And um, yeah, so as I was uh, preparing to come back for the weekend, I was excited to go through, I have my planner here, and I was excited to look through and refresh and reorganize for this year. So I have a bunch of stuff coming up. I have a bunch of ideas of things that I'd like to do here on the channel and on the website. So just know I have lots of ideas and things uh, coming. So that's just fun. So this is ready, and um, hopefully with my planner I'll keep on better track of what I'm wanting to do. So as I was going through this and, and looking at my phone and updating some things, I was looking in Facebook and someone is uh, currently working on a project to create a coat from an anime. And they were using one of my patterns that's on the website. And I gave a couple suggestions on how uh, what they could do with the lines to make it look more like what's in the photo. So we'll put a photo here. And excuse that it's not a great photo because it was really hard to find just a photo featuring the coat because they're mostly, you know, action shots. But anyway, um, to get a coat like this, I had made the suggestions. They said, well, I'm not sure how to do that. And I said, well, if you confirm what pattern you're using, um, I can work on that for you. And I thought, since I'm going to be doing that, we'll just do a video on uh, how to get from this pattern to this outfit or this coat. So put the photo away. So the pattern that we're starting with is uh, the wrap coat and paper bag pants, uh, paper bag waisted pants. Um, it's in and of itself on the website. It's also some of the pieces that are featured in the new um, Hanbok collection. So that is available already. And I went ahead and grabbed the coat so you could see what we're starting with. And I'm going to turn this off so it's not backlit so bad. And hopefully that's enough light because it's kind of dark outside. Um, but this coat is, it's called a wrap coat because that's exactly what it does. There's no other closure. It just wraps and then you just tie a belt around it. So there's belt loops. It has a lapel and a collar. We can turn up the collar here. It's available on the website and it can be either solid or like this coat, it can be color blocked. So in the pattern, the sleeves, if you want the color block piece, the sleeves are each three pieces. So there's the top of the shoulder, the mid length, and then the wrist part that is all um, pieced together and then put into the garment. The front has a color, bo color block piece at the top of the shoulder and the neckline here. And then in the back, it has a seam down the back because it has a split um, hem down at the bottom. And so then the back has a color blocked yoke pieces that can be put in. And then I made the collar match the top. So that's what the coat looks like. It's pretty simple um, in that you don't have to worry about buttons. To make it fitted to the doll, there are some uh, open-ended darts in the front and in the back. And so to make an open-ended dart, let's see, do I have a neat piece of scrap fabric that's not this dark? 
All right, so to make that dart, um, this is just a scrap piece of fabric, is on the inside, you would fold the fabric and then you would just sew from say point A to point B, but you don't sew like all the way to the fold, you just sew next to the fold, like a straight little line. And what that will do will create a dart when you open it that's open at the top and the bottom. And then when you press it, let's see here, I'm going to make this one really big so we can illustrate it a little bit better, I guess. <laughs> so let's say our dart is like an inch in, just for the sake of illustration. So when you press it, you want to take that that piece of fabric and you're not going to go to one side or the other but you're going to actually um, lay it like press it flat so that it flattens out and so there's a little bit of fold on this side and a little bit of fold on this side and then you press like so so that you can kind of see that it kind of creates a tube and then on the outside of your garment it'll be sewn but then you have that really nice like inset double dart and it's just a really nice um, look if you want one of those kind of darts but you don't want it to actually like end in the fabric so that's what these are and hopefully they will, will show I do have like a metal uh, tiny turning tool so maybe this will illustrate it and you'll be able to see it better but there we go so you see how this is an open dart and you can slide something in and out because it's only sewn parallel to this uh, to the fold it doesn't go from one edge of the fold to the other so hopefully that explains that a little bit better with um, a little bit more of a graphic so you can see it so this coat has four of those one on each side of the front as well as two in the back on both sides of the back seam okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take the pattern for this coat and we're going to try to alter it. And um, so I'll show you the tools that I most often use if I'm working with patterns. Uh, first off, of course, I like a really long ruler. So this ruler is, I'm going to move, I don't know how the lighting is going to show this, but this is an 18 inch ruler or, and I don't have my glasses on, a 45.7 centimeter ruler and it's clear I prefer clear rulers because then I can see everything that's going on underneath it which I prefer this one um, I purchased at uh, Staples it's just an office supply store that we have um, and so it just says staples on it. It's just the store brand. It's not a fancy brand. And I don't remember how expensive it was. But it's a nice wide, um, long ruler that gives me lots of length if I'm doing, you know, longer sections rather than having to piece with 12 inches. I like the extra length. And um, another thing that you can get is... Uh, a metal ruler if you get a metal ruler you can either just get a flat metal ruler or they can be cork backed to help them uh, keep from sliding so that's another option this is another 18 inch ruler has some slices in it though because I've used it to cut cardboard <laughs> and then another type of ruler that you can get that I have that once in a while I like is um, it's this is by exacto and it has a zero in the center and then it counts from the center out on each side. So if you know you have a piece that's four inches, but you want to find where the center is, you can line up one side with a two, the other side with a two, and then the zero will mark your center. So it's just a kind of a nice way if you want a certain length, but you want to even it out, you can do one and then count the same way on the other side so that's just a nice tool it has inches and centimeters and um, so that's a nice way to uh, center things if if that's of interest so but usually when I'm doing patterns I 
use the old trick of just folding my paper. <laughs> a lot of times if I want to uh, make something have perfect symmetry, I'll just fold it in half and draw one side from the fold, cut it out, and then I'm done. But the other thing is also a good tool. The other thing that I do use quite often in uh, drafting is uh, either a 45, 45, 90 or a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The reason I like triangles is because it can guarantee that a corner is an actual 90 degree corner. So I like this as a tool or if I want a line to be straight up and down on my paper and I have, you know, an actual purchase paper, I can line up the bottom edge and then if I draw straight up I know that's going to be a straight up and down line uh, and I won't be at an angle. So it's just another handy tool to verify your lines. If you're not comfortable drawing curves you can also get um, what's called a set of French curves and uh, templates and so this uh, set came with let's see three three templates that help make uh, curves so you can draw your curve lines and then um, either on the fold again uh, cut them out the same at the same time or you can just you know flip it over and have the same curve on both sides if you're not comfortable freehanding your curves so these are just some tools that um, can make pattern drafting easier, so I thought I would mention those. Also, when I'm working, I prefer a mechanical pencil, and this is a Stettler pencil, and I'm going to put my glasses on, just because I'll be able to see better. <laughs> there we go. So, I like this. It's a Stettler drafting pencil, but the reason I like this is the lead in this pencil is very very thick and this lead is made to be sharpened so it's not just click 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 until it's gone and put in a new one it's thicker a little harder and you can sharpen it and so I like that because you can get a very very sharp point on this the sharpener you can buy the sharpener that goes with it and you can either put a writing tip or a drawing tip so one is is more uh, precise and sharp than the other but you can sharpen it two different ways um, also the pencil comes with dun, 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 a little sharpener in the cap so if you don't have the budget to get uh, the sharpener and the pencil because they're a little more spendy um, you can use the little sharpener that's in the cap. Also, you can buy the refill leads. It comes with a couple leads, and then you can uh, also buy refills for it. And then, of course, I have an eraser. I have one that's just, I don't know, from Walmart or Dollar Tree or something. And uh, so this is just a click eraser that I'll use on small things when I'm working, or I have just... Uh, Faber Castell white eraser. I like the white erasers better than the pink erasers because they don't leave residue on your paper. Then let's see when I'm drawing actually drawing the patterns out I like to use sharpies. I use the regular sharpie for the outside cutting line and then I use the fine tip sharpie for any inside lines and uh, writing. So those are uh, the tools that I like to use. And then I also always have a pair of scissors handy um, because a lot of times I'll need to cut something out so I can flip it or uh, transfer information. So when you print out the pattern, this is what it will look like. There is the front pieces. Now this pattern is made to be assembled before you start cutting fabric. So when you print it, it's going to look like this. But for an example here, what you'll do is you'll cut out this piece, then you'll cut out this piece, then these two pieces need to be taped together 
to create the entire pattern piece before you start working. Um, I think the back is going to be the same way. So you'll cut out the back, cut out the bottom back, connect them. There's overlap here so that you can put glue here or you know exactly where this line is supposed to come to. It'll cover that overlap section and you can tape it or glue it. But that way you put those together before the pattern piece is ready to be used. The reason being uh, that I here in the States, if you're just buying a printer from the store, generally speaking, consumer uh, printers versus commercial printers are geared to have a paper width of eight and a half inches, maybe nine inches at the most, um, here in the States. And so to print out on larger paper is not really that feasible for everyone who would want uh, the patterns. And so I always format my patterns and fit them on uh, the common paper size here in the States, which is eight and a half inches by 11 inches, and it's called letter size. So that's why a lot of these pieces have to be assembled before you start cutting. It's, it's simply to be able to fit them on an easily accessible size of paper for people who want to print them out. So if you're in uh, different areas like the UK and you typically use a four paper, I think it is, let's see, is it a little bit shorter and a little bit wider? I'm not sure. It's a little bit different measurement. And um, what I would suggest is on your printer, uh, go into the properties and select actual size. And then it may spit out a couple pieces of paper and you would have to actually assemble a little bit on one edge or one end before you start the normal assembly. But um, that's the only suggestion I would have on how to transfer that over. So anyway, so this is what your pattern will look like. Of course, if you print it out from the website, website it'll have, you know, the logo on it. It'll look prettier. But these are the pieces that we're going to be using. Here we have the front facing and the uh, back facing. And then, let's see, we also have um, back in the back, there's the color block options. So we're not really going to be using those at this point. So that's what the pattern looks like. I thought we'd just go over it really quick before we start actually working. So now you know the tools. Uh, the pattern, again, is the wrap coat for the 66 centimeter SD size ball jointed doll. And this, these pieces are also in the handbot collection if you want to just print out that set. But beware, it's huge. It's like a 43 page file. So, <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to take a lot of paper <laughs> where this doesn't take as much paper. So... That's what we're starting with, and we'll move the camera around so you can better see what I'm going to be doing, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started on changing up this pattern to make a new design. Okay, so I have my drawing board set up here, and uh, I have my camera kind of <laughs> precariously positioned as well as I can um, to try out this new filming method, so hopefully it'll be helpful. But I have uh, some clear, like, clear, uh, what do I want to say, translucent tracing paper. I'm going to slide my ruler in here um, so you can kind of see how transparent this paper is. It's actually um, paper for medical chairs, and I buy it in a roll. Let's see if I can grab it and I'll put it in the camera. So it comes in a roll like this. I've mentioned it on a couple other videos. I think it was about $12 a roll at the time that I bought it, and I bought two, um, and I've used quite a bit, so this one isn't quite as thick as it would be brand new, but it makes wonderful tracing paper, and it makes wonderful pattern paper. It feels similar to what you would buy 
um, like if you buy a pattern at the store, that's kind of what this feels like. It feels like that weight and that translucent. Also, what I have found, strangely, um, because it's kind of porous and matte on one side, it's slightly glossy on the other side. But this actually handles being pinned to fabric really well. Um, more so sometimes even than just printing paper. I, I don't know why. Maybe because it's so thin, it's a little more flexible and it can handle, you know, being rumpled a little bit more so than just copy paper. Um, but if you like to make a lot of patterns, even if it's for your own clothing, not just doll clothing, um, I would highly recommend this because it's a good width. So uh, my ruler here is 18 inches. So I think this ends up being like 20 inches wide. But because it's a roll, you can roll out whatever length you need. So I love that, that the length is not limited especially um, if I'm making things for taller dolls. So anyway, that's uh, the kind of paper I'm using. And because it's translucent, it makes wonderful tracing paper. If you don't have a light table and uh, you want to be able to see through, um, I'll move this over a little bit. And the ruler was, you know, obviously in there, but even if we have another piece, you can see it really well and uh, move things around. So, there we go. Now, um, with the uh, desired design that we want, it's going to be a jacket that's more flared. So, I'm going to start with um, probably the front. The one thing I did notice on the illustrations that I could find was that the shoulders seem to be extremely extremely broad and the sleeves seem to have a wide opening um, they just seem to be very like full sleeves not just at the bottom but at the top and then they get fuller at the bottom so um, I don't know if this makes a lot of uh, rhyme and reason but this is how <laughs> my brain operates so we're gonna start with the front and I'll kind of go through the steps uh, as I do them. I'm going to use my ruler to hold things in place over here, uh, the little shorter ruler, just um, because this is pretty upright and I don't want things falling off the table. So uh, the camera is slightly, oh, <laughs> yikes, in uh, the way of my view. So hopefully I won't obstruct the camera or bump it very much. But I have a lot of room, so, and if I need a new piece of paper, that's fine. Also, I noticed the cape is not as long on the fella as uh, this jacket is on my dolls. So I had already marked on this pattern when I was drafting it. Um, of course, I have the, the inset dart here, the, the double-ended dart, and I have lines for the color blocking. But I also had a line across the bottom for a shorter vi version of this coat. Um, so I'm going to take advantage of that because I've already marked it. So what I'm going to do to start with is my front piece. I'm going to take advantage that this is already measured to the 60 centi 66 centimeter doll. I'm simply going to draw around the neckline that's already here and take advantage of that. And then I am going to broaden the shoulders by about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to come out and I'm going to lift it up just a tad more. Um, that might be, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch up. So it will be more of a square shoulder. And I want that to be very broad. So now when I come down, because I've come out, that's going to close this armhole a little bit because I'm, I'm extending it out, which is going to make it smaller. So I'm also going to lower this a little bit. I'm going to come down to here. So now I'm going to come down, but I know that I'm going to drop that down. 
because those are bigger armholes. So there we go. So there's the neckline, the shoulder extension, making this a little more broad and dropping that down. Then I'm going to make sure this is nice and flat. I'm going to mark my edge here and I'm going to come down and mark the length and the front edge here. I'm holding it still, make sure my lines are all good, and I'm going to mark the end here. Okay, Let's get this out of the way. So now I'm going to use the ruler and connect some lines. So I'm going to start up at the top and draw it down to the bottom. If I can line up my lines here. Okay, then I'm going to draw across the hemline on the front. All right, now I'm going to put this on here just so it'll be a little bit easier to see. Okay, so now I have that much drawn. Now, here comes the part that would make it more like what I saw in the, the pictures is from the arm it has a flare so I'm going to add about an inch to the side and I'm just going to a line that down not quite a straight line it's still going to curve in a little bit towards the body and then gradually flare as I come down until I, I like it. And then I'm going to gently curve up just about maybe a sixteenth of an inch. We did our neckline first. And then the shoulder. And if I want a nice straight shoulder, we'll go ahead and use the ruler. Okay. Then we have the extended arm socket and we'll do the front over on this side. If I can line up my ruler and hopefully it won't move. There we go. Okay and it looks like the bottom is a little off camera so I'll move it after I get it. Okay so let's see here. Let's tip it down a little bit. Across, and then it's just going to slightly come up just a little bit and then this is going to have just a little bit of kind of coming down and then flaring out like so. Okay, here's our new front piece. <laughs> so I wonder if I can get farther away and kind of see. Oh, that looks a little bit better. Um, if I get it too far away, then it's going to hit me in the nose. So, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to do the back. And I want to make sure that I don't uh, forget what this is. So, I'm going to write a uh, Howl Jacket Front. Okay, so here's our front piece. And to do the back piece, I'm going to do a little bit of finagling here. This is where the tracing kind of comes in and makes it very convenient. Ah, see, and there went one piece. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to cut out the front here. Okay, so that's why I always have scissors handy. Okay, and we'll move my paper so it's a little bit easier to see and uh, reclamp this at the top just to keep it attached to the board. Okay, so now I want to make the back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the piece that is our front piece underneath and what I'm going to do is on uh, the back, 
there's there's extra in the center front because the coat in the front was designed to overlap and as I'm thinking about that if you want it to still overlap um, <laughs> I may end up taking a little bit off of this so it doesn't overlap so much because I don't think the one in the the pictures uh, overlaps. I think it's just a, like supposed to be like maybe a zipper or something. So I may take some out. Let's do that now while I'm thinking about it and make it not as wide, not as much overlap in the front. And yeah, so here again is where I'm going to grab my 3060 triangle and line it up with the inside of the bottom hem. I'm going to take about three eighths of an inch off of that. And I guess this is good to see in real time because then you can see my process as I make changes. This is literally how I do it. So if you're kind of, uh, you know, making changes and changing your mind and then going back and forth, that's totally within the scope of your creative process and it's okay. So, all right, we're going to hold this against the bottom and it's not quite tall enough but we'll extend it up here and we're gonna there we go and then I'm just gonna scribble out this that I don't want there we go because we don't want that I don't want it that that wide okay now back to where we were here's the front underneath and on my actual front piece, I have a line that goes down that's the actual center front. So I'm going to put this where it was originally. And I'm going to draw that line on as well. Mark there. Okay. So that way I can see the actual center front, not just the overlap. So this will still have a bit of an overlap, and that's okay. All right, so that's my center front line according to this. So I'm going to use this center front line as the seam line for the back. And the seam line on the back would be a quarter inch in. So I'm going to line that quarter inch, what would be the sewing seam line, with what would be the center front. It should be right here. And as you can see, then my neckline lines up pretty well. So now I have the back placed over the front, and I have the seam line to be my guide for the center back. So now I'm going to add that seam allowance that would be here, down to here, and do I, I'll go ahead and put the split in the back of like the cape thing as well as this coat. So I'm going to just keep that little extension that makes the makes the back overlay and, and have some like facing behind it. So I'm going to finish in with this uh, neckline and this shoulder is designed, the shoulder line is designed to come a little bit uh, over the front and I'm just going to keep that. And here again I'm going to extend it out to where I had the front. Okay, so there we go. So that has my lines. Now I'm just going to go ahead and trace what I had on the front piece as far as the armhole and the side because I want my side seams to match and then my shoulder is a little bit higher up so we'll add that addition there Okay, now I'll go ahead and draw what is the cutting line here. There, that neckline wasn't showing. Then I'm going to finish out the 
that little bit for the open end. And because it seemed to be kind of cape-like in the way it fit, I'm going to make the center back a little bit longer. Not a lot longer, but just a little bit. So the center back hemline is going to come up and meet and it's going to round up but I don't want it to like make a jog so this enough for the seam allowance would match and then I want another quarter inch to kind of match so that it's more gradual when it gets longer there we go so when you sew it it will be more of a gradual change than just all of a sudden it's here and then it gets longer because um, I want it to be uh, not as noticeable but it would end up being just a little bit longer in the back and if you don't like that you can always just cut it straight across okay so now we'll remove the front piece put it out of the way and let's see I'll use this one to hold my paper and now we'll do this piece with the marker the back neckline then we've got the center back and I'm checking my camera here it's counting now uh, I don't want it to turn off and stop recording <laughs> at a an important spot there we go and the armhole and the shoulder all right the flared side okay so that's what it is so far now I'm just thinking in the anime it just seems like it has more flair to it than that so here's here again I'm I'm in the thinking process I'm going to flare the center back seam as well so I'm going to add this I'm going to come out here there. okay just a tiny bit so that's adding just a little bit more flare and there's my hemline and I think I might do that on the front as well so we're going to add a little bit more flare and it's going to be a little bit closed okay so I'm going to go in a little bit at the top because I don't need that lapel and then I'm going to flare it down at the bottom. So here we go. So I don't want that. And I don't want that. Okay. And I do want that line right there. And I do want that line. Okay. So there's my choices for the front and the back. All right. And just to make sure that I don't forget which lines I want I'm going to actually cut that now because otherwise it's easy to forget which line was I going to use I don't remember so I'm going to go ahead and cut along the line that I am choosing to keep and if this just seems like a really messy process huh I apologize but this is what I do <laughs> Okay, that's trash, so we don't need that. So here is our front piece and our back piece. And once again, on the line, I want to make sure I keep the correct line. So I know which one I'm selecting. Okay, here's my front and my back. Now, I know that I... Uh, have the same curvature here, but these are a little bit different. So
So when I'm making a sleeve and I want to fit the sleeve in, I draw in this seam line because the big bold black is my seam, uh, my cutting line. So I'm going to have a quarter inch here for the actual seam line. And then I'm going to put the seam line for the shoulder and the seam line for the side. So that from here to here is my actual sewing. I'm going to do the same on the back. in my side seam and my shoulder seam allowance for that piece as well. So on the back from this point down to this point is my actual seam line. So let's make that dark so you can see what I'm looking at here. So here and here and here. So from this little cross down to this little cross is where I actually would sew. I'm going to do the same on this one. And then we're going to draw that sewing seam. Okay. Everybody ready to breathe? <laughs> the other thing that I use all the time and I forgot to show um, this just happens to be a simplicity uh, version my daughter got this for me for Christmas one year but it is a tape measure and it has both uh, inches and centimeters I use this religiously <laughs> when I'm making patterns and I use the centimeter side because it is more accurate and easier to divide. So what I'm going to do is I turn my tape upside down so that the little increment measurements are right next to the paper. So I am counting from, let's see, from right to left uh, instead of normally you'd count from left to right but I want these little tiny increments to be right next to the paper and I'm going to start with zero on the actual uh, seam line where those seams would meet and I love this little tape measure because it can bend right along the curve of my line which is fantastic and it's kind of weird because I'm on a slanted surface so bear with me I'm going to match the line And my measurement is right at 8.1 centimeters. So I'm going to write this here. 8.1 centimeters is this measurement. All right, I'll set this guy to the side. And put a ruler on it so he doesn't fall on the floor. Now we're going to measure on the back. And here again, I'm turning it so that I'm using centimeters with my little increments right on the paper. And they won't show a little bit because I want that to be right on the line with the edge of my tape measure. So I'm going to pull it very zero. And I'm going to come down and around the edge here. Bring it up. And this one is nine centimeters. Okay, so set that to the side. So that will be important because now we're going to go ahead and do the sleeve. All right, and now that I have this thinner piece of paper that's more narrow, that's going to be my sleeve, the first thing I'm going to do, remember I talked about the way I like to do symmetry is just fold in half. <laughs> so I'm going to make a fold line here. Kind of one of the fastest ways to do it. And I'm going to make a line on my fold here 
And at the bottom, so I have my reference. All right, now I can go ahead and clip it at the top. There we go. Clip to the board so it doesn't fall off. Okay. Gonna grab our ruler, make a straight line. And this will be the very center of the jacket. Okay. I'm sorry. The center of the sleeve. So here is the sleeve. And this one, I can still see where it was folded when I made it. So I'm going to put a couple lines here. And I'm going to lay this underneath and match up the center of that sleeve. Okay. So here we have the sleeve with the center and what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to draw a line that is the sleeve as it is as far as the shoulder and the armhole and then the length. So there's the length and the shoulder. So now in this sleeve, because we enlarged the armhole, one was 8.1 and the other is 9. So we're going to have 17.1. I'm going to turn this into 17.5 to give myself a little bit more pucker. If you want it to fit exact, that's totally fine. But when you're dealing with centimeters and you want a good fit, I like to have at least that much room. And if I end up with a couple of puckers at the very top of the shoulder, I won't mind. Usually once we sew it in, there's enough give and you're going around enough corners that it kind of evens out to be pretty flat. So I like to have that 0.4 centimeters give to fit it into the armhole. So instead of doing seven, the literal 17.1, I'm going to go with 17.5 as far as my measurement. I no longer need this because I have the top and the bottom marked on my paper. So now I'm going to draw in what would be the seam line. So once again, I'm putting that in. And because we enlarged those armholes, I made it so it wasn't quite as defined. I'm going to straighten this out just a little bit so it's not quite as curvy. And I'm going to draw what will be the seam line. So now I need to divide 17.5 by 2 because these two measurements are the front and the back of the sleeve. So this is our total across the top. And now I want this to be divisible by 2. So it's going to end up being like a millimeter split difference. But we're going to end up with... So if we divide by 2, we're going to have an 8 and 7 and 5. So it's 8.75 centimeters. <laughs> so, yeah. So what we're going to do is I'm going to find 8.75 so it would be 8.7, there's 8.6, 8.7, and then halfway right between there dun, 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 is where I'm going to put my little measurement. So there's 8.5, 8.6, 8.7, 8 and then right in the middle. There we go. So that's where the center will, uh, my sleeve will be. And now I'm just going to bring that measuring tape down the seam line just like I did before. Follow my pencil line and then I'm going to put a little line when I get to the zero. And there is my seam line. So now I just extend the, the line out to give myself a seam allowance. And now this sleeve is just a normal width at the bottom. I'm just laying this here so it's easier to see because uh, those pencil lines are pretty faint. 
so you can see how it came out just a little bit more and we also brought this up a little bit more so that gave us a little bit more length in the sleeve so now we want the sleeve to actually kind of flare out a little bit more so I'm going to add a good what is that I don't know. a good one and a half centimeters to both sides of the sleeve so I'm going to extend the hemline there we go and I don't I still want it to kind of look like it's flare um, flaring out so I'm gonna take the here we go put it back in position so you can see it I'm still gonna come down I'm not gonna come straight down because I don't want it to be really fat at the top and then get more narrow so I'm gonna kind of angle down coming slowly out and then I'm going to start flaring out and come more straight down. So that way this part will fit to the coat but it won't be really big and then kind of funnel down because I want it to kind of come out and then flare wide at the cuffs. So it will look a little bit more like the actual anime uh, pictures. I'm going to draw the top edge. And the bottom hemline. And then I'm going to draw the side. So I've only drawn half the sleeve, right? So here's where my little... <laughs> My little preference comes in rather than drawing the other side and trying to make it match I'm just going to fold this on my fold line make that nice and crisp and I'm going to cut it out the top of the sleeve. These are no longer needed and voila! We have our sleeve ready. So we have our sleeve, our front, and our back all ready. Now I'm going to take advantage of this smaller piece of paper that I still have um, attached at the top that still has a fold line and I'm going to finish drawing the fold line on here Let's make that easier to see okay okay so I did mention in the zigzag um, coat pattern that it's really easy to make the back facing um, because all I'm going to do is, let's see, we'll connect this again, there we go, is I'm going to line up this line on what would be the center back seam line. So not the cutting line, but the actual center back line where the seam is. And then I'm going to trace the back neckline and the back shoulder line all the way to the edge and then I'm going to come from that and just make a curve and I want the curve at the bottom to kind of come a little bit like 90 degrees for just a minute so that it doesn't have like a point at the bottom and then I'm going to gradually curve up and round this to meet this uh, up to the shoulder, the outside of the shoulder. And I'm just going to kind of do that line so that I like how it looks. So let's 
see if I can get the lid off. There we go. So we have our neckline because this is the cutting line. And then our neckline here. Or, I'm sorry, shoulder line. Then we have our center back because this piece of fabric is going to be just one piece. It's not going to have a seam allowance there. And I'm going to curve up it meets the outside of that shoulder okay once again I'm going to fold it on my fold line and now I will cut there we go And then cut on the neckline. Okay. And here is our back facing. So that piece is done. All right, I'm going to trim away some of this wonky part sticking out. Okay, so now once again we have a folded piece of paper. And I'll write back. And this was, what was the name again? Howell's Jacket. I'm just going to put Howell's back facing. Uh, so when I'm putting all my pieces, I remember which one goes to which. And this was Howell's sleeve. Okay getting too many pieces. Now we have the collar to contend with. <laughs> you can tell me in the comments what you think of my experiment of uh, doing it on the board here. Um, if you like the way it, it presents, um, just let me know. So see if I, I'm doing all right here. So I am going to once again put the collar, the center back of the collar on the fold line of my paper so I only have to do this once and in the the pictures uh, this color I have two options in the pattern one is with like a rounded corner and then one is this uh, pointed color uh, corner but it looked more like not quite Dracula cape but more cape like collar so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the neckline the same because I already know that that fits my garment. And then I'm going to extend just a tad because on the, the front um, it had lapels, but I don't need that much of a lapel. And I took a little bit off, so I'm going to extend the collar to go closer to the edge of the garment. And then I'm going to flare it out just a little bit more. And let's see. Yeah, just a little bit more. And then I'm going to make it a little bit taller in the back. And then gradually go to meet this part. There we go. So it is a little bit taller. Taller, but it's not like a, a Dracula type so it is a little bit taller than it was but it's not as curved so then and I might even flare out a little bit more at, at the top end. there we go and then I don't want it quite quite as pointed. Okay, so then this is going to be the collar. So once again, it's folded, so I'm just going to cut it. And we flared it out. So here is the collar of the coat. 
Now, when I look at this, I'm thinking, oh, I don't know. I think I want it to be a little bit more flared. Um, it seems like that would be kind of rounded more than I want. So let's see if this, if I can make a slight change. And I still have enough paper. Yeah, I do. So I am going to match the bottom. And then instead of having my center line up perfectly, because that would give me the exact same thing, I want more room in the back. So I'm going to tip it down to give more room in the center back. And I think that would look a little bit more like what, what I want. And I'll draw around the edge there where we had. Draw the same line here and then curve this. So that way the neckline where it attaches to the garment is the same, but I've added a little bit more room in the back, in the center back, so that hopefully it will um, stand up a little bit more away from the neck. So once again, I'm cutting here, and I've added that little bit, and then we'll uh, open it up and compare them so you can see the change. All right, let's get rid of the scrap fabric. And this is the one that goes to my previous pattern, so I don't wanna lose that. Okay, so here was our first draft of uh, making it taller and a little bit wider, but it still looked like it would wrap close to the neck. So we added that change, and here's the difference. So here you can see that it doesn't curve as much and it comes down a little bit more so that it will still fit the neckline, but it will have more room around the actual neck than this piece. So this was our first piece, but now we have more room up here. So this is gonna be our collar. I'm gonna throw that other one away so I don't use it by mistake. So this is Howell's collar, and we cut two of those. Okay. The last thing we need to do, we've got our back piece over here, is we need the front piece again. So we'll put this in the view and stand it up with a ruler. And I'm going to need to cut some more paper here and take advantage of what I have left. Okay. And we don't need the back right now. Put that to the side. All right. So now we'll clip this to our board at the top. Okay. We're making progress. The last piece that I'm going to make will be for the front facing. I'm going to trace the front uh, edge and then I'm going to trace the neckline and the shoulder line again like we did for the back facing then I want it to be a pretty wide facing um, because the coat falls open so much. So I'm going to make this really wide. So I'm going to come from the shoulder. Oh, maybe not. There we go. More like this. Uh, from the shoulder, I'm going to curve down to my ruler and come straight down. And then go ahead and do the hemline. All right, so now we'll draw it on there. Okay. Oops, I keep moving my ruler. Hold still, ruler. Okay, and then part of this is straight, so I come from the tip of the shoulder. Do 
the bottom. Okay, so um, the shoulder and the neckline. Okay, and that would produce a front facing. So this is Howell's front facing. Okay, so there's that piece. Now, I got to back up a little bit. So we'll take a look at what we have. <laughs> our new collection, our new pattern collection. Here we go. So we have a front and a back. We have a front facing and a back facing, a collar, and a sleeve. There we go. If um, you want the jacket to be completely lined with red, then instead of cutting the back facing and the front facing, you would just cut a set of pieces of all of these of red. And you essentially make a red one and then you make your colored one and then you sew the lining to the garment. Um, I would usually do it when I'm putting the collar on and uh, then you flip it to where the sleeves lining are inside the sleeves and then I would hand sew the sleeve lining at the cuffs. Uh, and it's that all comes into play when you're actually putting it together. But as far as the pieces you would need, you would just make all of these of your fabric and then all of them uh, of red, except for you wouldn't use the facings because you'd be lining it so you wouldn't need these facings. So that being said, the sleeves in the pictures have... Uh, two-tone as far as color there's like a, a piping on the edge and a, a band of I think it was white there's a couple ways to do that the first is the easiest and that's simply to cut a band of fabric to go across and put the piping onto the fabric and onto the fabric and then sew it on to this and then just put your sleeve in and use it like one piece of fabric. If you want to color block in in the actual pieces, like piece the sleeve together, just remember that when you're going to piece together like two, so let's say you want the, the white to be about, about right here. And I'm going to put my zero on the center um, to line that up. Okay, so you're going to say, okay, but I want it to be two pieces of fabric. So you draw your line. I just recommend that if you do that, where's our, our marker? We want to make it easier to see for you guys. Remember, if you say, this is where my, my color is going to meet the white band. Remember, you can't just cut here and then make this piece one and this piece one. Because then, when you sew them together, remember you have to have seam allowance. What you're going to have to do is first say, okay, this is my top piece, and it's going to be one color. Oh, I just dropped a pen. That's okay. So what you're going to have to do is trace out like where you want your top piece. So I'm going all the way around here just for the sake of illustration here. down to where I want that color to 
meet. And here again, if you've sewn for years and this seems kind of boring, um, just keep in mind that there's a lot of people who've never done pattern making before or they're new to sewing and they wouldn't necessarily think about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that line. This is where I want the colors to meet. But now for my top piece, I'm going to add that seam allowance below where that color would meet. So I'm going to add that seam allowance to that piece. Now when I go to make the, the bottom piece down here, I'm going to go around the edge. I'm sorry, this just doesn't want to stay. Here, we'll grab our tall ruler. There we go. Okay, so now on the bottom piece, here's my sides of the, the sleeve, like before. Here's my hemline. Okay. So now I'm going to draw the line where the color would meet, right here. But now I have to add a seam allowance. So I'm going to come up a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to add that seam allowance. So now, if we lay our original sleeve here, and then we place the new top piece, over the top. We can see this is where we wanted our colors to meet. Move it a little bit. There we go. And then we put our bottom and we match the seam line. So here, I'll put an arrow. This is the seam line. And on the bottom, this is the seam line. There we go. Surprised I don't have black all over my hands at this point from that goofy marker. Okay. Now, the top over. So here's where our pieces are actually sewn together. This is just seam allowance. Now we're going to lay this one on top and we're going to overlay the actual seam line and then, ta-da! Now we end up with a color blocked sleeve, two pieces of fabric that once they're sewn together, they have the same shape as the original single color sleeve. So that's just a reminder that anytime you're going to color block, once you draw the line, remember that on either side of that line, you have to add a seam allowance. Because if you don't, and if I were to just cut here and sew the pieces together, so we'll sew and we use a quarter inch seam allowance, then once you get it sewn, you've taken a half inch off the length. So now we'll lay this on top of this for our length. So if we do it correctly, we end up with the original size that we had. But if you don't, if you don't remember that seam allowance, then once you sew it, now we'll overlay it having no seam allowance. See how much shorter it is down here? Because we've used up that fabric as seam allowance. And so now the seam line um, has shortened the sleeve. So just a way to illustrate, always remember that if you're going to color block, when you draw your line of, okay, this is where I want the, the item to be divided. This is where my colors are going to come together. You have to add a seam allowance on the bottom part and on the top part. So when you put them together, you're still in good shape. So um, I'll go ahead and include these pieces, I guess. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is uh, get this ready um, because obviously these now need to be uh, drawn onto eight and a half by 11 paper. And then I need to make them pretty with uh, the right lines in the right places and no ugly arrows. 
on the edges and uh, making them kind of ugly. And um, so yeah, so that's how I would go about changing a pattern from one shape to another to make, in this case, the Howl's Castle jacket. I don't know who the character is, but anyway, I don't know if Howl is the character, but that's what this pattern will do. It'll produce that jacket. Okay, to illustrate making the diamond design, I've sewed some strips of um, uh, faux leather together, and they I used my two-inch uh, quilting ruler. I use it a lot during sewing. It's two inches wide and 18 inches long, and it doesn't have any like extensions on the end, so the measurements are true. It's just 18 inches by two, and I use that to cut my strips so that they're all the same width. I don't have to measure anything. I just use this as a cutting guide and I put it on the edge, cut, put it on the edge, cut, put it on the edge, cut, so that all my widths are the same. So this is a really nice tool because you don't need to measure if you're looking for something two inches wide. And so that produces a strip that's one and a half because I have a, half, a quarter inch seam allowance on each side. So if you have your two and you take away the two quarter inch seam allowances, you end up with an inch and a half for the actual width of your sewn strip. Then I did top stitch all the seam allowances down just because this is um, like fake leather and it's really stiff. And if I didn't do that, they would not lay down at all. <laughs> so to uh, now my next step so I brought this part to the camera, and this is where those handy tools come in again. So depending on the size of what you're doing, you may also need your cutting edge. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this uh, triangle down so that I can have a 30 degree angle. And because, let's see, I'm going to lay it on the top because I want my angle to come this way just because it's easier for me. So I'm going to line up the edge of my triangle with my top line. And then I'm going to use this as my cutting edge. And I'll get there in a second. But here's the deal. When you're using this technique, you are definitely going to have waste. Um, there's really no way around it. And that's why I didn't make sure any of these ends were nice and tidy because they're going to end up getting thrown away anyway. So what I want to do is I want to conserve as much of the fabric as I can. So I'm going to line my triangle up and I'm going to keep scooting to the edge because this is the edge where I'm going to cut. And so I want to bring that edge all the way to the end of my uh, top gray there. So I'm lining this up. And I got a little bit more, just so I can keep, you know, as much of the fabric as possible. So I've got my straight lined up here. I'm going to press down. Now I'm going to put the two inch strip snug up against the triangle. Now I'm going to move the triangle. Now this will be my cutting edge. So I'm going to cut along that edge. There we go. So see, this is all going to be thrown away. Don't need that. Now I'm going to continue because now my uh, line is established. So I'm just going to continue cutting these strips. There we go. I was thinking, what am I going to do with this when I'm done? And I, I'm thinking... I might make a purse. That might be kind of fun. All right, so I'm just going to keep cutting all the way down. Now, once in a while, just if you want to double check your work, you can always reline up this triangle. Make sure that your edge is true. Because you don't want to... Uh, I have a little bit of a bow in my ruler, so I'm going to flip that the other way. All right, there we go, just cutting through 
all of our strips here. Isn't this fun? <laughs> so I just, um, uh, the person who um, had asked, well, they didn't ask, but I just kind of said, you know, if you'd like some help, we can maybe do this. Um, I don't know how much sewing is already under their belt. So I thought, well, you know, let's just add this to the video and um, maybe it'll be helpful for somebody. Because I just, my heart broke at the thought of someone cutting out all these diamonds. <laughs> now these may look like, okay, but they're not the same. These are longer, but remember, we're going to have a seam allowance on each one of these. So now to make your diamond pattern, all you're going to have to do, I'm going to see, make sure I'm still in the, the view of my camera here, is to take your strips and you're going to shift them. So you're going to sew these together like this, and this one will go here. Then this one will go here, and this one will go here, and then this one will go here. So when you sew them together, see you're going to end up with waste along the outsides. But that's how you can sew these together and then um, get your diamond pattern without having to cut out all the diamonds. Now the other thing that I will say is when we flip it over to sew it, do not line up the tip of where this comes together with the tip of where that comes together. Because when you do and you open it, they're not going to match. Okay, so you're going to offset your seam because remember the part that you want to match is where they're actually sewn together. So imagine your quarter inch seam allowance. Here is your seam. And then when you look here, a quarter inch down, that's your seam. So that is where you want those to match. So your actual end of where those come together it's more like you're matching up the edge of this seam allowance with the center because that gives you that so that you have only one layer of your seam allowances match. So you have this seam allowance and this seam allowance that match up together. So then we'll get a quarter inch. So that is where your seams are going to match like this, so that they offset one another. There you go. So now we'll go ahead and sew these together and then see how our diamonds turn out. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that I'm not sewing the same color together. I'm gonna to shift it up one so that my gray and my pink are together. And here again, I'm gonna look at the ones that have already been sewn and I'm going to line up the seam allowance so that that quarter inch of the top one here and the bottom one here are what match. So the top edge of this seam allowance matches my little seam and the bottom edge of this seam allowance matches this seam because we want to offset that just a little to account for the fact that we have seam allowances in place. Then I'm going to lay this down. So we're going to line it up here and put it into the machine. And I'm going to start a little above where I need to sew just so that I catch my needle in well. All right. Here we go. I'm going to kind of adjust as we're coming down the line. And then what I'm making sure of also is that all the little seam allowances underneath are flat so they don't get bent backwards just because this guy um, is really thick. Okay. And we're not going to reveal until we can get a couple layers done here. Well, I guess it will reveal because the one I have to unfold. Okay, so let's take that one out. All right, I guess it will reveal because I have to open it in order to sew the next one on. Oh, so much for my surprises. All right, so let's see how we did. And there we have our diamonds. And because this stuff is so lumpy, we're going to go ahead and open the seam allowance on both sides and I'm going to sew down 
Uh, and this will take a minute. And I'm just laying this flat because it makes it easier to sew on the next one if this one's not all lumpy. So for this material, it's kind of a necessity. I was thinking of what I would do with this. And um, the bag is an option because um, I'm not making a big enough piece uh, to do a garment. I'm just, you know, I wanted to kind of have this for a method display, but I thought, you know, it might be enough to make a little handbag once we get it done. All right, so now I'm going to lift my foot and hope it will stay up because you know my machine, it just doesn't like to leave the foot up. There we go. And now when I turn it, my needle is sunk and I'm making sure that that seam allowance on the other side is flat. So I'm going to do a 90 degree turn and I'm going to do two stitches. Then I'll do another 90 degree turn so that now I can come back down the other side. good so far. Open up these seam allowances and I'm going to bend this one just so that it's consistent. There we go. Okay. And come down to the end. All right. And we'll cut away our thread. Okay, so now for the next one, instead of going up, I'm just going to come back down. So you're shifting like this. So here's all of our strips that we've shifted back and forth to sew together. I've got them all top stitched. And the reason you want to go back and forth and back and forth this way when you're putting these together is if you continually move this way, you're going to make your, your end result long and thin rather than balancing it out to get a surface area that you want to work with. Now the other thing is the interesting thing that can happen with perception. So if you look at this you think well it's just a bunch of chevrons but I wanted a diamond. So you look at your your pattern here and it's just a bunch of you know chevron designs. But here's the deal. The interesting thing that happens is when you take this and you shift it now you have your diamonds. So it's um, it's all a matter of, of the turn of your fabric. So now when you place your pattern pieces on it, you're not going to lay them according to the direction of what you sewed. You're going to flip that. Ta -da! And now you have your diamond design that's ready for your pieces. So that's the quick way that I would do this. Um, rather than trying to cut out all these little diamonds and sew them together. It's just a lot faster. It's a lot easier to be more precise. Um, your diamonds end up being uh, matched better and that's what I would do. And then you have a whole new piece of fabric here to lay your pattern piece on and cut it out. What I would recommend is on the back side of your fabric, so here's mine, if you were to lay a pattern piece on here, I would draw, because you're using the back side, so make sure you turn your pattern piece so it's the, the good direction towards, you know, what would be the good side of the fabric. So you're looking at the back side. Draw it on the back side, especially if you're doing this method, and then sew inside the seam allowance or like on the actual seam line of your pattern pieces just to anchor all these little pieces in place because you're going to be cutting across threads. And so I would, before I cut it out, I would draw my shape, whatever I'm making, then on the seam line I would actually just sew along the seam line then once I remove it, then I would cut it out because then you've anchored all your pieces together so they're not going to come apart while you're trying to sew it 
to make your garment. So there we go. I apologize if it seems a little choppy in my editing for some uh, unknown reason to me until I explored. Uh, my camera stopped recording and then it would only record a couple seconds at a time and I thought, what is happening? But my SD card was way too full so I cleaned it out so I could do this last little bit and show you our end result. And um, so hopefully I can edit that together so it makes sense and um, isn't too choppy for you to see kind of what we were doing. But there we go. There is how you move uh, the design from one style to another. And then if you want to piece together something to get a particular look uh, for this specific project, that's how I would put my diamond design together on my fabric and have it ready to cut out and sew. And now I have to decide what I'm going to do with this little gem. All right, so happy sewing, you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.